So I've been hiking for about five miles now and I'm finally up out of the trees where I can get a view of the peak right here that I want to shoot later tonight. You can see that really nice glacier up on top of it and hopefully these clouds that are back over on the west side of the range will roll over this side and start to fill up this river valley. Got to go right up over there, cut that ridge line, and then back over the top of it there's a lake with another ridge behind it. And I'm trying to get above that lake so I can shoot down on this. So the clouds have been rolling through enough that this peak keeps poking through. Let's see, right back in there. So sometimes there'll be clouds that roll through really close like this. And then there'll be some breaks in them. So I just have my composition set up. And when there's breaks, I just fire it off. The one thing that I noticed was really helping out was all the sun hitting the foreground really makes or breaks the photo. And you can see that the sun's about to dip below that big cloud. So the first thing I did when I got here is I saw that sun hitting there. And I was like, all right, I got to expose that shot first because as soon as that's gone, the whole foreground's gone and I'll have to change my shot up. So let's take a quick look at these photos and I'll show you how I combine them all using Photoshop. So if we go down here, you can see that I have this foreground layer right here. And this is the one that I focused just for the foreground as the light was hitting from back here. So I exposed very bright for everything below this part of the scene, knowing that that's the only part of the photo that I would use. So that was the first one I captured. The second one I captured for these clouds when they started to dip down here into the middle of this valley. I really like how they broke up the composition right in here and added some extra detail that I wouldn't have had if it was just these valleys back here with no clouds. And then the third exposure was just taken as the clouds moved through and the mountain peaked through in the middle of the clouds. So I waited for these, I timed them, and I also took a bunch of other exposures that didn't turn out well as the clouds moved through. These were just my favorite ones that I'm gonna use for the final shot. So let me quickly show you how to combine these. So the first thing I'll do here is just create a layer mask. And if you guys don't know the basics of Photoshop or layering or anything else, I'll put out some more videos on this. This is just a more advanced blending technique that you can use for combining different images together. So I'm just going to brush through this. For my mask settings, I'm gonna use a hardness of zero. So a very soft feathered brush and I'll go with an opacity of 100. So I'll just quickly brush this through here. And these are still the raw files. They are smart objects. So I will be able to adjust them more. This is just the initial blend. So I'll bring that through like that. And then I'll also go back to maybe a 50% opacity and a white brush. And then I can just feather the edges of this a little bit more back and forth so it blends in and it looks nice in the final shot. So something right in there could look good. If I was actually gonna edit it, I'd take a little bit more time. So now I can just group these together like this, and we'll just call this sky clouds. And then I need to mask this into the foreground layer. So once again, I can just use my brush tool and a black brush, and I can start to bring in the foreground wherever I want it to exist. And whenever I'm doing this and masking for the actual portfolio images, I take a lot more time to do this, but I just want to generate ideas for you guys so you can go perfect the process on your own. So something right in there. Now the nice part about using smart objects and camera raw is that if I think this is too dark or too bright down here, I personally think it's a little bit too bright right in this area. I can just double click and I can open the smart object back up and then I'll drop my whites, and now we'll control the whites down here so it won't look as bright. And then if I hit OK, it's just going to jump right back over into Photoshop for me. So that gives me the combination of the sky images and the foreground image with this mid-ground of the clouds rolling through. So this is my base RAW file that I'm going to do all the editing adjustments on. I just needed to get it set to blend all different parts of it together so it could look really good in the final image. And instead of focus stacking, I'm just shooting at f16. And if I'm in here at the hyperfocal, and I ensure that's sharp like that, 
with that in focus, my foreground ended up being in focus too, and the peak, so I got lucky there. But that's why I'm shooting at F16. Oh, there's good cloud conditions right there. I'm hoping when that sun peaks down below, it'll hit all those clouds up in that area. And every few shots here, I'm just checking my histogram. That looks good. Drop this down a little bit and fire another one off. What I've noticed when shooting with this Z7 is I can clip the highlights pretty hard and it will still retain it back in post just because what I'm seeing on the back of the screen here is the JPEG rendering of the raw file. So there's a lot of headroom in the highlights that end up getting clipped on the back of the screen. But now that I've had this camera for, it's almost been a year now, I've really got to experiment around with it. I'm really liking how it works. It's way lighter than the D810. The sensor's slightly better, more megapixels, which is really nice because I can crop in. So all around, so far so good. I'm shooting the spire back here and offsetting it with these trees on the left hand side. The one thing I was having trouble with is these trees were blowing around a little bit and they're really close to me compared to that spire. So I noticed when I was focused on them, zoomed in, and shooting at like f11, and I was shooting at ISO 64, the shutter speed was too slow, so they weren't very sharp because they were shaking around. So I went up to 400, I was up at 500 for a little bit, and that gives me a 50th of a second. That solved the issue. So I liked this shot when I was taking it in the field, and I took a few different variations as the clouds were moving through up here. But once I got home and started to look at it, I noticed that I had a really large dead space right down here in this part of the image. And a dead space to me is anything that's repetitive or boring, but takes up a very large part of the image. So I feel like nothing is really going on down here to help out to tell the story of the image or provide any interesting detail. I like these trees offsetting the mountain, but something else I always like to keep in mind is any time that you have trees in the foreground such as this that are higher than something in the background that you want to look dominant, such as a mountain or peak like this, these trees are going to make this mountain look much smaller to your eyes. So a few fail failures that I made there that I don't really like with this image, all the settings were correct. The conditions were pretty good, but the color and the composition wasn't ideal. So I'm going to end up throwing this one out. So what I was doing for this composition is getting it dialed in, zoomed in as far as possible. So I'm shooting at 200 millimeters, but due to the large megapixel count of this camera, I'm going to be able to crop a pano out of this that takes off the entire bottom and the entire top. And all these clouds that are sitting back in the valleys look really cool. So hopefully I can make a shot out of it. So I'm just going to crop it down right here to right above these clouds and then I'm going to crop the bottom up so I have this ridge line right here acting as a leading line it's just going to grab my eyes and shoot them back into the middle of the photo you can also see this leading line coming in here from the side of the screen and helps my eyes to move from the sides into the middle of the scene so I'll crop it something like that and I think that looks pretty good I could also crop some of the edges a little bit I always like to see what the crop looks like full screen and then I'll crop in a little bit if need be. And that'll tighten up the viewer's attention on this center part. Maybe something right in there. And that puts the center of attention peak almost at the center, but you can see it's offset just a little bit to this side. I don't really like to put anything dominant at the direct center. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we have the transition from cooler colors down here and anytime you have a transition from different colors that lie opposite from each other on the color wheel your eyes can easily move from one color to the other so we have cool colors here such as blue and they're going to slowly transition to warm colors in the back of the scene helping your eyes to move through it so i haven't edited this one yet this is just the initial crop and some thoughts on how i would go about it all right that's a wrap for the night that was one of those shoots where 
the adventure and the hike up got me really excited and then I got up here and whoop, the light was not really what I wanted but maybe I'll still be able to salvage one of those compositions maybe I can go home and throw up in the computer and see what they look like and I think my best bet is that last one the pano one but maybe there'll be some good light in that first one I took too where I was shooting over this landscape behind me. I need to go find a place to put my tent and get some water. I am dehydrated right now. I was pushing it to get up here and I was like, okay, I'll get water after I shoot. Now I can really feel it. So I think it's a wrap for the night, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the morning.